a basic set of team ratings based on uh, final scores. So to set up this page, I have every single team listed here and then rating. We're going to start. These are just arbitrary numbers here. We're going to let the solver go to work on this cell. So it doesn't matter what you put in it. Just put something in it. Um, grab the mean of all of these. So you can see I just did average and it takes into account all of the teams right there. Easy. Home edge column category cell. Uh, important part here is you can name cells. So let's just take and as an example here, X, Y, Z. If you go up here, it's it's 01, but you can I can name this cell um, named. So now anytime I want to reference that home edge, you can see it is named home edge. And in this forecast, we're going to be using home edge, and it's, so it'll take in three. So it's, a, it's a cleaner way to write formulas that then uh, scale as you drag them down across different data sets. But that's an easy, um, important thing to do, important thing to know. So that's another thing that we're going to be, we're going to let the solver go to work on. So we just start, put any number you want in there. We'll start with the perceived home edge of three right now. That will change though. And then next moving across, we have the home points. These are all the results from 2017. So this was the first game of the year, 2017, all the way through the end of the regular season. We're only looking at regular season data in this study. So you can see home points, away points, Kansas City went on the road, beat the Patriots to start the year. Got all this data from Pro Football Reference as well. The Seasons and Schedule and Results tab, you can see here, starts with Kansas City at New England. I did have to share, get the Excel workbook, and then I had to move the columns around a little bit, but super easy to just grab the home points, away points, home team, away team in this format. Okay, home margin is a calculated field, pretty easy, just taking into account uh, F3, which is home points minus away points, uh, G3 here in red, so you can see that is just from the home perspective, home team lost by 15. If it's positive, uh, home team won here. So Detroit won by 12 in this game. You can verify that right there. All right, forecast is going to be the most difficult cell to build. Going to take a VLOOKUP here in our rating category, but I'll walk you through the, the logic. Um, we're taking the home edge, adding it to the home team rating. So in this case, let's say Arizona uh, was a 12, home edge a 3, so we'll give them a 15 rating. Say they're playing the Falcons who have a rating of 11. So 15 minus 11 would be a forecast of four. But this is the formula to actually arrive at that in a way that lets the solver go to work on all of this at the same time. So home edge, which is three, you can see here, it's grabbing that three as that, because that's going to change. We don't, we don't want to hard code that in. And then VLOOKUP is the function we're going to be using. And the other skill here, you can see I have lookup. But what this does is it's a named, just like we named the three here, home, home edge, I wanted to name this selection. So I just highlight this selection of what I want. And then you can see here, I already named it lookup. You would just highlight that, type in whatever you want it to be named. And then when you write the formula here, so home edge plus the lookup. And now let me show you an example from scratch. Okay. You see down here the, the function of VLOOKUP. So the lookup value, the table array, and then the index number. So the value is going to be H3. So we want to say when Excel, when this team right here in H3 is the New England Patriots, I want you to go over to this lookup selection and find the Patriots and return what their rating is. So I want you to find them and return that. So that's what that formula says, VLOOKUP. When it's H3, I want you to look up in this selection, the second column of that selection. Because remember we had two. Another thing you could do here is go to look up and it'll show you what, what's in that named. So it's, it's go to look up and look in this second column here for the forecast. And then the final part, add a, add a false. That, that's a, a little bit more mathematical, but just, just keep that as false for now. Okay, that's the home team portion of it. Now we're going to minus the away team. So add a minus in the formula there. VLOOKUP I3. So when, when this team is Kansas City Chiefs, I want you to look up from the selection, find the Chiefs, and give me back that second column there, which is their rating, and again, a false there. So that is the formula. What you'll do is write it one time, and then you can double-click this little 
icon here and it'll drag it all the way down and do it for each of the teams. Same thing with home margin, just do it one time, double click that and it'll drag it all the way down. Final part, the squared error. This is a little more complicated, but it's super easy to write the formula. Basically what we projected the game to be minus, or sorry, what the result of the game was minus what we forecasted it to be and then square that. So you can just do here K3, which is the, the actual result from the home team perspective minus L3, which is our forecast, and then we're gonna square that. Basically, uh, kind of see how far away our projection was, and then the solver's gonna also use that information to calculate a better rating for each of these teams. Okay, next part is the sum of squared errors, which is the part we're gonna be try to minimize in the solver, so we just have to write a simple formula here, which equals the sum of all of the different games and the squared errors in the 2017 season. So simple formula there. Now we are ready to let the solver go to work. Okay, so set objective M1, which is this one right here. We're gonna try to minimize that, minimize the sum of the errors by changing the cells here. So we wanna change this rating category. And I'll delete that just to do it again here. So you highlight all of the ratings there bring the solver back up and then so we're saying that comma and then also we want the solver to change this home edge so we can add that name field in there so it knows that's e1 so that's what we wanted to solve but we also need to add a constraint here you just click add and then we want the mean i didn't show you that part um the mean is just the average let me close that average of all of these average of all the ratings we want that to be zero so that the, the the good teams will be positive and the bad teams will be negative and then zero would be an average rating for all the teams so our solver's ready um, set objective m1 minimum uh, changing the ratings in the home edge with the constraint that everything's zero deselect this box that'll allow the ratings to go negative and keep this at GRG nonlinear. Don't need to get into that at this time. And then click solve. This will pop up. Just go ahead and click keep solver solution. Okay. And there we go. So this is actually zero. Um, looks not to be zero, but if you change this to number, for it, it was in scientific and That'll just uh, let you know how many zeros are there, but it's effectively zero with rounding. And we got it here. So what does this mean? Each rating, Arizona Cardinals, negative 3.7. I also wrote this rank just so we can see how they rank in this. You can just write the rank here with B3 ranked up against the selection and then just comma zero, which lets them know, lets Excel know what order, which direction you want it to order and then it will rank all of the teams for you. So you can see your Eagles won the Super Bowl 9.40. Oh, remember though, this was not taken into account uh, playoff data. So this was going into the playoffs, what the ratings would have been if you ran it at the end of the regular season. Team number two, Rams. Uh, team number three, Saints. Four Vikings, five Patriots. And now that we have this, let's, let me show you this. Let me show you something kind of cool. I did the playoff games what the rating would have been if you did this simple model of rating teams. So starting at the Super Bowl going back, would have had on a neutral field that took out the home edge. Eagles, this number here is the home team, which remember home team is in this category here. So home team would have been favored by half a point. That's the Eagles, but the actual betting line was the Patriots favored by four and a half. So you would have bet the Eagles if you were following this model. You would have won. They won outright. Going back one, let's go back through the rest of the playoffs too. Eagles versus Vikings at Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia by the model. Now remember, they didn't have their quarterback, so the the market you know thinks these quarterbacks are are really really important. So big 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 shift in perception. Let's let go back to the Eagles first game against the Falcons. Uh, model says Eagles should have been favored by over a touchdown. They were actually three-point underdogs at home, so that's a 10-point difference of what it what it uh, spread maybe should have been based on this model, and Eagles did win that one. Uh, New England-Tennessee, model said 14.8. 
the Patriots favored by actual line was right about there, 13 and a half, although they did did lean towards the Patriots and they did win and cover. Um, Steelers Jags, this was an interesting one. Spread was seven. Steelers were favored by seven at home. The media perception, oh, Jaguars have never made the playoffs. How are they going to react? Well, this model says the Steelers should have been about a one-point home favorite. Jacksonville did um, did win that game pretty easily. Would have won that bet as well. Vikings Saints. Vikings by two and a half. Uh, the line was by five and a half. So you might have played the Saints in that game. Um, would have lost, but it did come down to that hail mary at the end. So maybe uh, maybe should have won. Who knows? New England Jacksonville. These are kind of just kind of pretty interesting for me. New England should have been favored by four and a half or five at home. They were actually favored by seven and a half. So you might have bet the Jags in that situation. You would have won as well. Jaguars had a lead going into the fourth quarter, but they lost, but they did cover the seven and a half pretty easily. And then Philadelphia, Minnesota. Philadelphia, I think we talked about this one already, um, favored by two and a half or three at home, but they were actually getting three points. So that was about a five and a half, six point difference against the Vikings and Philadelphia did win that game. So in the playoffs, if you were using the simple model of rating teams, you would have gone, what, three, four, five, and one. The one that you lost was a Hail Mary, and not too bad, not too bad. I don't know that we can expect uh, that type of success moving forward. This is pretty simple. Again, there's a lot more um, complexity that you can add to a model, but at the same time, sometimes a, a good, clean, simple model is is better as a at least a starting point anyway. So I'm going to keep this updated as we go in to the 2018 season each week we'll do maybe a uh, an update video or kind of see what the uh, plays are that this model recommends should be fun pretty fun to track we can use maybe a combination of last year's this 2017 data as we add in 2018 results as well and maybe there's specific teams that it makes sense that maybe didn't change a lot from year to year to use more historical games versus less teams like the bears teams like the titans that were high on that maybe the model isn't as high on because they have a lot of data using their old uh, coaches and now we expect them to be quite a bit better but should be a pretty good balance there to uh, figure out what the the team maybe should be rated versus what the perception of what the new team should be this year so anyways you can see how quickly complicated that uh, this stuff can get as you try to add more ideas into the mix but at a basic level it's pretty easy to build this in excel and have a a solver driven model that you didn't have to just add a lot of subjective opinions to so so pretty cool not that complicated guys let me know if you have any questions and we will be on to the next video